You are watching Cold Fusion TV. A note to the viewer, I don't usually say this, but it's imperative that you pay attention to the entirety of this production. What you're about to see may very well be the future of computing and may affect you directly in the future. That being said, please enjoy the production. Since the dawn of our modern civilization, humans have been pushing towards something. We've continuously been creating tools to make our lives easier. Tools to help us build, survive and thrive within the circumstances of the age. Tools such as language, mathematics and science helped build early society. And of course, sometimes greed and the love of power did get in the way of this concept. But the creation of new tools never stopped. Directly after the Great War of the 20th century, we saw unparalleled prosperity and more positive changes to society than ever before. And a few decades later came the tool that truly changed the world, the microchip. As the Industrial Revolution expanded human ability in a physical sense by amplifying human strength, the microchip revolutionized and amplified the power of the human brain. We then saw the pace of technology increase at a brand new level. Even during the decades of conflict, a new age of rapidly evolving applications for the microchip came to fruition. After this, the internet shrunk the world and consolidated all of humanity's information in one place. All of our history, thoughts and ideas were put together and coupled with a dynamic experience featuring real-time interactions between individuals, communities and even political figures. Currently, we live in a time like no other and we all know it. But what tool is next after the internet? What is the next game-changing type of technology? As we fast approach the middle of the 2010s, it's clear that we've had plenty of new emerging technologies. Such advances have seen 3D printed houses, food, and most recently, and probably most surprising, 3D printed human body organs. In addition to this, we've seen a new type of legitimate, decentralized currency without a Federal Reserve to taint it, cryptocurrency. We've also seen the rise of the ultralight drone. Its applications span from surveillance to civilian uses. With the aid of the smartphone, drones can perform incredible feats unimaginable to the common consumer just a decade ago. And to top it off, we have the rather dexterous robots recently brought under Google's wing. But what if I told you that all of this paled in comparison to the implications of the next wave of technology? And why is that, you might ask? Well, this next technology was designed to operate like the human brain. Let me bring this to you in the form of a question. What if there was an artificial intelligence machine so powerful that it could take any information and quickly learn everything there is to know about that information and then give you relevant answers to naturally asked questions backed by reasoning? In other words, extremely advanced machine learning that results in reasoning. What if this machine could aid in finance, scientific research, healthcare, provide business solutions, revolutionize the food industry? and much more. So what am I talking about exactly here? Welcome to the world of IBM Watson. So what is it? Watson, at its core, is a supercomputer, but the genius is really in the software. It was hand-built by IBM and has cloud computing in mind. In a nutshell, it's the cutting edge of artificial intelligence, many levels above anything we've seen before. So you might be thinking, how is this any different to Google or Google Now? Well, please pay close attention here because this is where your discovery begins. The best way to highlight the massive implications of this artificial intelligence is to show you a demo. I want you to take particular note of the steps that this system is taking. So one of the prototype systems that we're building is something we call the debater. We give it freewheeling understanding of large bodies of information like Wikipedia and we ask the computer with no human intervention construct arguments pro and con on any subject we throw at it. And the result of that is what I'd like to show in the demonstration now. So as I said, we could throw any subject at it. I've chosen some here, and let's just pick the first one. So it will now look for all, in, all the literature and try to understand as a computer what's a pro and what's a con for violent video games. Let's roll the first one. Scanned approximately 4 million Wikipedia articles. Returning 10 most relevant articles. Scanned all 3,000 sentences in top 10 articles. Detected sentences which contain candidate claims. Identified borders of candidate claims. Assessed pro and con polarity of candidate claims. 
Constructed demo speech with top claim predictions. Ready to deliver. You have selected the topic. The sale of violent video games to minors should be banned. I would like to raise the following points in support of the topic. Exposure to violent video games results in increased physiological arousal, aggression-related thoughts and feelings as well as decreased prosocial behavior. In addition, these violent games or lyrics actually cause adolescents to commit acts of real-life aggression. Finally, violent video games can increase children's aggression. On the other hand, I would like to note the following claims that oppose the topic. Violence in video games is not causally linked with aggressive tendencies. In addition, most children who play violent games do not have problems. Finally, video game play is part of an adolescent boy's normal social setting. Would you like to discuss another topic? <laughs> so as, as you can see, <clears throat> uh, if, if we can go to the final chart, um, again, completely unaided by humans, the system went through all of this knowledge and constructed and reasoned, quote unquote, on its own. Now think about what this means. It's no longer a game, man versus machine. It's man and machine reasoning together. I believe this is the future of computing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that demonstration was pretty cool, but it's just the beginning. The thing that's most incredible about IBM Watson is what it can do without the internet. Like what, you may ask? How about beating two Jeopardy game show champions? Watson had no help, no internet. The computer was asked questions in the same way as the guests and at the same time as the guests. You are right. What is violin? Good. Who is the church lady? Yes. <laughs> Watson. What is narcolepsy? You are right. And with that, you move to 36000 $681. Who is Bram Stoker and the wager? Hello, $17,973 and a two-day total of $77,147. I would have thought that technology like this was years away, but it's here now. I have the bruised ego to prove it. My past Jeopardy experiences have been great, but they weren't really weighty with this kind of technological, philosophical importance. I think we saw something important today. And that was three years ago. The system is much better today. So much so that in February 2013, IBM announced that Watson's first software system application will be for management decisions in lung cancer treatment at Kettering Cancer Center. It has shown that treatment one has a 95% confidence of, of being effective, whereas treatment two is only half that. Is this um, so obscure that you would have needed Watson for the diagnosis? and treatment or would in, an oncologist come up with the same treatment? In plan? fact, this is such a new discovery of this particular mutation and it's a relatively new drug as well that my guess is that many oncologists may not be quite up to speed yet. Watson has been so accurate that today 90% of nurses in the field who use Watson now follow its guidance. For a first application of a new type of technology of this nature, this success is almost unheard of. All of this recent progress was somewhat unexpected, but Watson as a tool will only grow in application and power as time passes. Let's take a look at one more application of Watson before we break it down and see what this all means and how this technology might be relevant to you in the future. From traders at Citigroup, the bank hired Watson for his first foray into financial services. So what does the big bank expect to get from the trivia whiz? The Toronto Star says the bank will use Watson to take in everything from information about customers' profiles and banking activities to corporate quarterly reports, analyst reports, regulations, credit ratings, government securities filings, and the institution's own rules. It could also gather intelligence from online news reports, blogs, and Twitter feeds. There's a lot to take in, but the bottom line is that Watson is showing some very real promise of giving accurate answers to anything if you give it information or study material, if you will. All of this being said, there is a touch of concern among some. Watson displays ability to give reasonable answers in the fields of expertise that would otherwise require years of industry experience. Although today Watson is still a tool and a guide, the obvious question is, could Watson replace expensive employees that are currently within the same area of operation? Even though many said the same thing would happen with the microchip in the 1970s, nobody can know this for sure. If the job depends mostly on research and reasoning, it could very well be a possibility. 
The technology behind Watson is very exciting due to the fact that in November 2013, IBM announced that it would make Watson available to software developer providers. This enables them to build apps and services that are embedded with Watson's capabilities. In short, Watson may be coming to a mobile device near you, using the cloud of course, and in fact it's already on iPad for the medical professionals mentioned earlier in the video. In a previous episode of Cole Fuston TV, we've seen just how large Google became by providing the service of easy to find information. Imagine providing the service of accurate answers to all information. The implications of such a powerful tool are both exciting and confronting at the same time. But what can we take away from all of this? Looking at the wider picture, although Watson is smarter than a human, it's not necessarily more intelligent. After all, humans built Watson in the first place. So, that's all the latest information on the greatest artificial intelligence to exist on this planet today. Watson may just be the most advanced tool we've created yet. Let's see what changes it causes within society in the future. Hey guys, Dagogo here, the creator of that video and of course this channel. I just want to thank you guys for watching the whole way through and it's just really insane when you sit down and think about uh, all this technology that's happening in our world today and just how little people actually really know about it. So um, yeah, it's just going to be a really interesting uh, time when all of this comes into fruition and actually matures in a technological sense. But anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys for watching and uh, if you did enjoy that, please give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe subscribe if you liked it and share it to a friend if you think they'll be interested in this kind of technology, which I think most people should actually take a look at what's actually happening today. But um, yeah, I think that's enough for me. So until next time, have a good one, enjoy yourselves and I'll catch you again soon for the next video. Cheers. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.